Hey, what's up guys, Dan here. Uh, today we're gonna look at extension tubes really quickly. And specifically, we're gonna tackle the question of Canon extension tubes versus third-party Kenko extension tubes. So before we get into that, just in case you aren't familiar with what extension tubes are, I'm just gonna give you the one minute rundown. Uh, you probably know if you're looking at this video, but just in case you don't, extension tubes are literally just like spacers. There's no optics inside them at all. Uh, so these spacers go between the lens and the camera body. So we can take the lens off like this, put the spacer in the extension tube, and then put the lens back on. And what that does is it alters the minimum focus distance of the lens. It actually makes the, sh the minimum focus distance shorter. So without the extension tube, perhaps I can focus on something over here. Then you add the extension tube, and now you can focus on something that's much closer, like here. And then you add another extension tube and maybe you can get this close. So as you vary the height of the tubes, so you can stack these together, the higher the stack that you make, the shorter the minimum focus distance gets. Okay? So that's basically what extension tubes are for. And it increases the magnification of the lens and you can get macro-like magnifications from regular lenses like this 50 mil 1.8 from Canon. Uh, if you actually put, I know this because I did the math earlier, if you put these two extension tubes on here, the Canon 12 millimeter and the 25 millimeter, you actually get a 0.95 magnification, which is very, very close to a one-to-one -one macro lens right here. Uh, and that's just using $130 lens with these extension tubes on. And the results are very good. So I'll put some uh, examples up on screen for you as well. All right, let's get the camera out of the way. So the main question when you come to buy extension tubes, if you're a Canon user, is do you buy the official Canon ones or do you buy the most popular third-party ones, which are these Kenko ones right here? So Canon makes two extension tubes. They make a 12 millimeter and a 25 millimeter. 12 millimeter is around about $90, I think. 25 millimeter is around about $130, $140, something like that. Kenko ones come as a set of three. We have 12 millimeters, 20 and 36, and the whole set is $130. So roughly speaking, give or take 10 bucks, it's half the price to buy the Kenko ones. So of course, everybody wants to know, should I pay the extra money and get the official Canon ones or will the Kenko ones do the job? So let's talk about the differences between them. Uh, when you first get them out, the first difference you notice is the caps on the Kenko ones, um, they kind of suck. They're really plasticky and cheap. And to be honest, it's a bit of a, it gives you a bad first impression because as it turns out, the tubes are great. The tubes are actually much better built than I was expecting them to be. But the, you get a bad first impression because these caps that it comes with are just awful. So if I was buying these, uh, I'd take these and throw the Kenko caps away and just get some nice solid, uh, chunky Canon one, so it all, it all feels good. But that's practically the only negative thing to say about the Kenko ones. I was really, really impressed. Um, they're almost impossible to tell them apart. So here is a Canon and a Kenko 12 millimeter extension tube. Now, it doesn't matter if you look at the top or if you look at the bottom, they are identical. You can't tell them apart by feel. They both feel just as solid. You can't tell them apart by, you know, seeing, do they feel hollow and cheap? No, they feel exactly the same. The only difference in build quality is the lens release switch. So if I just put these two together for the moment, so we have the Kenko and the Canon 12 millimeter extension tubes together, and we have the lens release switches on them. The Canon lens release switch has a bit of a stronger spring in it, and it feels a bit smoother. The Kenko one is, it's okay, but it feels like it's rubbing a little bit. It just doesn't feel quite as nice. And that's not just the 12 millimeter one. The same goes for the other sizes uh, that come with Kenko as well. So it's, it's just the design of their switch is very slightly different, or perhaps it's the strength of the spring that they use that um, springs the pin back out. So um, that's really the, the only design difference um, that I could find between these. So in that case, would I say buy the Kenko ones or the Canon ones? Well, 
I say for the majority of people, these Kenko ones are going to be uh, a great choice for you. You get, you get options because you get, uh, where are we? Getting confused here. They all look the same. This is a problem. Um, so you get options because you get all three of them for $130. Now I don't find that I need to carry all of them around, to be honest. I usually would pick two. Um, I think what Canon has going for it is that these two seem to form kind of a really great partnership, the 25 and the 12. Uh, but the 20 and the 12 uh, from Kenko would suit most of my needs as well. Uh, I don't think I would carry, you know, the 36 and the 20 and the 12 all together. But um, it's nice to have that option. You can kind of mix it up a bit and see what you need. So highly recommend the Kenko ones. But having said that, I would own the Canon ones. Now, why is that? I'll tell you. The thing is, one of the things I'm personally going to use these for is for shortening the minimum focus distance on super telephoto lenses when I'm doing wildlife photography. Now, some of the lenses I'm using cost more than a small car. You know, they cost over $10,000. So when it comes to trying to save $130, if I think that there is even a 1% chance that the Canon ones are slightly better built or a little bit more robust, then for me, it's worth spending the extra money. Okay, now that's a very personal choice. I, I do admit that for most people, the Kenko ones are gonna be a better buy. But for me, when I'm relying on uh, photography, you know, for my income, potentially spending thousands of dollars on a trip somewhere, perhaps, a slightly different feel in the lens release lever, perhaps that's something I should pay attention to. You know, if I were to fly halfway around the world and find that the Kenko extension tube got stuck on my lens because the lens release lever was getting, um, you know, had got itself stuck in severely negative temperatures or something like that, I would be kicking myself for not having spent the extra hundred dollars because it's such a tiny fraction of my costs for doing business with that kind of equipment. So for me, I'm gonna use the Canon ones. The Canon ones will stay in my kit. But for most people, I think the Kenko ones are brilliant. If you're an amateur, or if you're just using smaller, uh, smaller lenses, or if you just um, re you know, really, really need to watch how much you're spending, then you are not going to have um, you know, any, any real issues with the Kenko ones. I think you'll be you know, just as pleased with them, um, just as surprised uh, by how great they are uh, as I was. So, you know, really, I can, I can highly recommend all of them. And if you, if you want to know a little bit more about extension tubes, hit the link in the description below if you're watching on YouTube as well, because there's an in-depth tutorial on all the things that you can do with extension tubes. But uh, hopefully that has made it a little bit clearer if you're trying to do this decision that everyone goes through, Kenko versus Canon extension tubes. All right. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to the channel.